Breaking news, a 32-year-old man charged tonight, accused of purposely burning the Islamic Center of Fort Pierce. Joseph Schreiber arrested this afternoon after deputies say community tips and surveillance video led them to him. We have live team coverage tonight from the Schreiber's neighborhood to the mosque, but we begin right now with Megan McRoberts live at the sheriff's office. Megan? Well, this arrest was a result of a team effort between local, state, and federal investigators working as quickly as they could to identify Joseph Schreiber and arrest him today. Only hours ago, he was escorted from the sheriff's office here to the jail where he is right now being booked and charged. Investigators also tonight giving a lot of the credit to the community for helping them make this arrest so quickly. Escorted from the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office to jail, 32-year-old Joseph Schreiber facing charges for setting fire to the Islamic Center of Fort Pierce. An arrest in this case has been made just 65 hours after the fire was reported. Investigators say Schreiber is the man seen on this surveillance video from Monday, running away seconds before fire ripped through the mosque. Then he takes off on a motorcycle. Investigators say they only received eight tips in the following hours, but enough to pinpoint Schreiber. Received more than one tip that identified Mr. Schreiber. Investigators say nearby businesses and homeowners also helped investigators track the alleged arson's path through surveillance videos. That also led them to check cameras along Torino Parkway in Port St. Lucie. Schreiber lives near that area on Zenith Drive. Immediately after receiving the tip, we started uh, um, investigating the individual and trying to determine where he is, what his habits were, and things like that. So, Finding him today in downtown Fort Pierce on Depot Drive. Picked up when he was walking on the street. They also served a search warrant at his home, finding the motorcycle that appears to be used in the crime and other evidence. That motorcycle and his vehicle both brought into evidence at the sheriff's office. Investigators say Schreiber is a known felon with a violent criminal history that includes armed robbery. Investigators crediting the community for leading them to an arrest. It was very important for the community that we brought this individual to justice, and we're here to tell you today that that's what we did along with all of our partners. And Schreiber could be looking at some serious time in prison. He is charged with arson, but a hate crime enhancement will be added to that, which makes the uh, level of severity a first-degree felony with much more potential time behind bars. He could be looking at a minimum of 30 years up to life in prison. The FBI also right now is looking to see if there are any federal charges they could tack on to all of this. Reporting live in St. Lucie County, I'm Megan, Megan McRoberts, Fox 29 News. Megan, thank you. And right now, Schreiber is currently being processed into the St. Lucie County Jail, as Megan indicated, with charges coming of arson along with that hate crime enhancement. The Sheriff's Office indicated he's an habitual felony offender. His criminal record is long, with crimes ranging from theft to armed robbery. According to Fox 29 legal analyst Michelle Suskauer, that criminal history, along with that hate crime enhancement, could send him to prison for life. What this hate crime enhancement does is it bumps it up a layer so that if this was a second degree felony, this would bump up to a first degree felony where he'd be facing 30 years. But with his prior criminal history, he could absolutely get a life sentence. The St. Louis County Sheriff's Office says he'll be booked into the jail without bond and we are expecting him to make a first appearance in the morning. They didn't expect it. They don't seem to have had any particular indication something was coming. Um, they would be as shocked as any of us would be if it was our, our child. Tonight, Joseph Shriver's parents shocked and overwhelmed by the police presence just as much as their neighbors tonight. A family friend talked to our Michelle Casada just outside Shriver's home. She's joining us live right now from the St. Lucie County neighborhood off Northwest East Torino Parkway, where neighbors are surprised by this arrest. Michelle? Ashley, Joseph Schreiber's parents are back in their home tonight after detectives raided the residence earlier today. A rabbi from a local temple the Schreiber's used to attend escorted Schreiber's father back home tonight after detectives and deputies left the neighborhood. He says that this arrest came out of left field for the parents. St. Lucie County Sheriff's detectives swarmed this Port St. Lucie neighborhood off Northwest East Torino Parkway. Rabbi Bruce Benson says with nowhere else to turn, Joseph Schreiber's father walked into his temple for help. This has come very much out of left field. 
Rabbi Benson says he met Joseph seven months ago when he started to study the Torah at his temple, Beth El Israel. He came in, he had questions, as they all did, and that really was it. He was very kind, very uh, open, and very accessible. Rabbi Benson says Schreiber only attended a few classes and he never returned. The rabbi says his parents are at a loss for words. It doesn't make any sense to them at all. Neighbors are also puzzled. Giovanni Wallace's friend recorded this video of a military style vehicle pull up to the home on the 5700 block of Northwest Zenith Drive. More than a dozen detectives were seen going in and out of the home for hours, later removing this motorcycle from the home. It would be sometimes out in the, um, in the driveway. The bike is a key piece of evidence. Detectives say the arsonist left for Pierce Mosque on a Harley Davidson style motorcycle the night of the fire. Wallace and his friends say they've spoken to Schreiber a few times. Did he ever seem like a threatening person at all? No, he really didn't. And if he did, he didn't show any signs to me. Another neighbor who wanted to go by Terry has been following the news, hoping detectives would make an arrest. She just never thought it would be so close to home. It's a disgrace. It's, um, it's, heart, it's heart, heartening that that's happening in our neighborhood. Rabbi Benson tells me that Shriver's parents have not been able to talk to their son today. They learned about what their son was being charged with just as detectives started moving into this neighborhood. Reporting live from Port St. Lucie, Michelle Casada, Fox 29 News. Michelle, thank you. The Council on American Islamic Relations denouncing the actions of the man deputy say set fire to the Islamic Center of Fort Pierce, but they fear this won't be the last attack on them. Fox 29's Alex Hagan continues our team coverage live in Fort Pierce tonight with more. Alex. Well, Jake Hare, Florida stood outside this mosque this evening and applauded the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office on their arrest. They also made it clear they will rebuild this place of worship despite the ongoing crimes they say are happening against Muslims. An act of hate. In the shadows of their damaged mosque. Crime against all worshippers in Florida. The Council of American Islamic Relations. Filled of hate. Eager to condemn the actions of Joseph Schreiber, the man deputies say set fire to this place of worship. Both Wilfredo Ruiz and Omar Saleh used the same words to describe Schreiber as they did with the man who gunned down 49 people at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando back in June. The person who does an action like this is a degenerate. He's a punk, and he does not speak on behalf of his religion. This is, for certain, the worst attack on an Islamic center of worship in Florida, in the history of Florida. They also reminded people what happened here is nothing new. This is going to be a historical record on hate crimes in Florida against the Muslim community. Now with an arrest made, parishioners like Bibi Aladdin can focus on cleaning up and rebuilding. It's sad what happened, and it's not right. It's not fair to us. Our camera is capturing the extensive damage inside the mosque Wednesday evening, but members and the council making it clear this place of worship will be rebuilt sooner rather than later. In rebuilding and starting to worship here again as soon as possible. Now we're told the community has offered their support to help rebuild this mosque. We're also learned this evening that the mosque has no insurance. However, mosque leaders would not go into any further detail about that matter. Live in Fort Pierce, Alex Hagan, Fox 29 News. I have much more coverage on this arrest coming up a little later in the newscast, including how Facebook helped detectives solve this crime. We will be at the court hearing tomorrow where Schreiber is expected to make his first appearance. You can stay with Fox 29 and WFLX.com for any new developments.